we have launched a series of newspaper terms simplified which covers the important terms mentioned in the newspaper related to different subjects such as geography environment science polity economy etc and it will be covered solely from the prelims point of view we have started this series because बहुत बार जब हम न्यूज़पेपर पढ़ते हैं तो हम होलिस्टिकली पढ़ने के वजह से या बहुत छोटे छोटे टर्म्स जो आते हैं इकोनॉमी के या साइंस के उनको हम निगलेक्ट कर देते हैं और बहुत बार फिल्म्स एग्जामिनेशन में उन्हीं स्मॉल टॉपिक्स पे या टर्म्स पे क्वेश्चंस पूछे जाते हैं टॉपिक फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज नमामि गंगे इट इज ए न्यूज बिकॉज वर्ल्ड बैंक इज अप्रूव फ्रेश फंड फॉर नमामि गंगे प्रोजेक्ट so in this topic we are discussing the objectives and organizational structure of the namami gange so namami gange was launched in 2014 it is an integrated conservation mission under the ministry of jal shakti so this question has been asked that it is the mission under which ministry so it will be under the ministry of jal shakti now moving to the aim the first is abatement of pollution as we all know ganga river is facing the huge crisis of pollution because of the industrial waste and the agriculture waste and solid waste is also increasing day by day second is the conservation and rejuvenation of the ganga river conservation and rejuvenation means the conservation of biodiversity and maintain minimum ecological flows in the river ganga because if the flow ecological flow of the river gets reduced and the water become stagnant which affects the biodiversity as well as the quality of the water so these three are the objectives of the namami gange project that is effective abatement of pollution conservation and rejuvenation of Gang- river ganga and to maintain minimum ecological flow so now moving to the main pillars of namami gange program first is sewerage treatment infrastructure so before moving to the main pillars we should understand that the namami gange components are as entry level activities first is to control the entry level activities that is river surface cleaning roller sanitation crematorium modernization ghat repair and new construction of ghats many a times the waste is disposed directly on the rivers river surface cleaning includes the man waste disposal in the river directly these are the sources waste disposal in the river solid waste disposal on the ghats solid waste cleaning solid waste reaching through drains and pos refuse so these are the sources of pollution in the ganga river so the first activity is river surface cleaning and this is done by providing the thrash screamer so you can see the before cleaning and after cleaning pictures now moving to the second component that is roller sanitation so for this swachh bharat mission has been launched and the swachh gram has been established third is the crematorium and modernization because many times ashes are drained in the river and also the and also the cremation is done on the river ghats which increases the pollution level and the fourth is the ghat repair this is to increase the aesthetic property of the ghats now moving to the second component the medium term component is municipal waste management and industrial effluents management these we all know that the sources of big pollution is municipal sewage management because the sewage waste directly moves to the rivers and increases the pollution similarly with the industrial waste so apart from the cleaning of the river ganga the second main activity is biodiversity conservation afforestation and water quality monitoring and the long term objective is ensuring adequate flow of water so if these activities are done properly then only the adequate flow of water will be ensured otherwise it will not be present so we have discussed the main pillars of the namami gange program as you can all see in the figures now moving to the organizational structure the whole structure of the namami gange project is divided into five levels the first is national ganga council which is chaired by prime minister of india it is most important thing to know because in 2016 a question has been asked about the key features of national ganga river basin authority so in this it has been given given in the third statement one of the chief minister of the straits through which the ganga flow become the chairman of ngrba on rotation basis 
this statement is wrong because national ganga river basin authority has been headed by prime minister and now the national ganga river basin authority has been replaced by national ganga council so the first one is national ganga council under the chairman of prime minister then the empowered task force on river ganga under chairmanship of union ministry of jal shakti then third one is national mission for clean ganga state ganga committees and district ganga committees it is the hierarchical system which has been established for the implementation of this project national mission for clean ganga is the implementation authority at the national level and it includes the governing council and executive committees similarly at the state level and district level the committees has been formed this structure attempts to bring all stakeholders at one platform to make a holistic approach towards the task of ganga cleaning so in this article we have studied the main objective of the namami gange program and also the organizational structure now moving to the second topic that is central zoo authority so why it is in news because the environment ministry has reconstituted the central zoo authority so firstly you should understand the definition of zoo zoo means an establishment whether stationary or mobile where captive animals are kept for exhibition for the public so zoo is the form of ex situ conservation so the biodiversity conservation is done by two methods in situ and ex situ in situ conservation is that in which the animals are kept in the natural locations such as the wildlife sanctuaries national parks and the second is the ex situ conservation in which they are placed in the gene banks or the zoos and the other areas in which they are protected externally so the central zoo authority is a statutory body created under the provisions of wildlife protection act 1972 so this is the most important thing mentioned in this the in this article because many a times a question has been asked whether the body is a statutory body or the executive body and it is created under which act you can see that that there is a question in upsc 2014 that animal welfare board of india is established under the environment protection act 1986 national tiger conservative authority is a statutory body national ganga river basin authority is chaired by prime minister so the first statement is wrong because animal welfare board of india is established under peta and not the environment protection act so knowing of the act and the whether it is a statutory body or the executive body is important so now what is the statutory body statutory body are those which are established by the act of legislation so in this the central zoo authority has been established under wildlife protection act 1972 if it is established simply by the executive order without passing of the legislation then it is known as executive body so the objective of central zoo authority is to enforce minimum standards and norms for upkeep and health care of animals in indian zoos and to control mushrooming of unplanned and ill conceived zoos so central zoo authority is the main authority which controls and manages the zoos in india so these are the functions they provide the technical assistance and financial assistance to the zoos they will define whether the particular area is a zoo or not so they can recognize and de recognize zoos and the most important thing is they identify the endangered species so if you are reading any environmental organization just concentrate only on two or three things that is the type of body under which it has been formed under which the under which ministry it is working and the main functions of it the general functions will not be asked in the examination the important and the some unique functions which have been given to the authority will be asked for example to identify endangered species can be asked in the examination mainly related to central zoo authority because many of students will get confused in this point apart from that rest of the functions are general in nature so now moving to the third topic it is about a species of flower which have been rediscovered after 136 years earlier it was thought that it has been extinct as we can see that in upsc 2016 as we can see in upsc 2016 a question has been asked about a species of banana plant which attains a height of about 11 meters and has orange colored fruit pulp and it has been discovered in which part so while reading a species 
you have to concentrate on two or three things first is the location in which it has been found the second one is the special characteristic and the third one is the category or the criteria in which it is present in the iucn red list so moving to the topic this is the flower is known as globa andersoni and it has been found in the sikkim himalayas near the tista river so if first point is it is the so first point is its location and it has been discovered after 136 years so it will be the special characteristic now moving to the iucn red list it is has been listed as endangered so what is iucn red list iucn red list is the criteria are intended to easily and widely understood system for classifying species at high risk of global extinction सो आई सी एन रेड लिस्ट जो है वो हर स्पीशीज को नाइन क्राइटेरियाज में डिफाइन कर देता है जिससे ये पता चलता है कि वो स्पीशीज जो है वो उसकी पॉपुलेशन ठीक है या वो एक्सटेंड की कगार पे पहुंच रहा है सो इसमें नाइन क्राइटेरियाज जो है वो रखे गए हैं नाइन क्राइटेरियाज का जो पहला क्राइटेरिया है वो है एक्सटेंट मतलब द एनिमल हैज बिन एक्सटेंट एंड इट इज नॉट फाउंड so no known individuals is remaining the second one is extinct in the wild so for the conservation I, as i have told earlier two methods are used in situ and ex situ conservation so agar koi bhi animal extinct ho gaya hai wild mein lekin wo captivity mein rakha gaya hai taik wo zoo mein rakha gaya hai to usko category mein rakha jayega extinct in the wild now moving to the third category it is critically endangered it is extremely high risk of extinction in the wild critically endangered wo species hoti hai jo high risk of extinction hai jiske criterias mein ye hai ki population is reduction in population is greater than 90% over the last 10 years that means continuously the population is decreasing population size means 50 mature individuals hi bache hain baki sare jo hain wo mar chuke hain next category is endangered That is high risk of extinction in the wild. Endangered species वो होती हैं जो extinct in the wild मतलब wild areas में बहुत ही जल्दी extinct हो जाएंगी भले ही overall extinct ना हो Now moving to the next is vulnerable high risk of endangerment in the wild. Near threatened is likely to become endangered in the near future. That means अगर अभी हमने उनका conservation के लिए कोई भी steps नहीं लिए तो in the next few years they will become to endangered category least concern is that as the lowest risk jo bhi species critically endangered endangered vulnerable near threatened mein nahi hota that is counted under least concern data deficient hota hai jinke bare mein hame population ki information hame zyada nahi mil pati to wo aate hain data deficient category mein aur not evaluated कि जिन स्पीशीज के बारे में हमने कैलकुलेशन करा ही नहीं है जैसे बहुत सी स्पीशीज होती है वो कुछ एक ऐसे एरियाज में रहती हैं जहां पे रिसर्च पॉसिबल नहीं है तो दैट कम्स अंडर नॉट इवेल्युएटेड सो वाइल रीडिंग ए स्पीशीज दीज थ्री एरियाज हैव टू बी कंसेंट्रेटेड सो नाउ मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द नेक्स्ट इज बटरफ्लाई स्पीशीज डिस्कवर द सेम इज विथ दिस टॉपिक ऑल्सो इट्स लोकेशन इट इज फाउंड इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश the first one is stripped hair streak and the second is elusive prince so the location of these two species should be known to the student and the next is golden birdwing that is india's largest butterfly has been found so the question has been asked on this because this is the special characteristic that is india's largest butterfly has been found in which region so it has been found in didi hart in uttarakhand the smallest butterfly is quaker with a wind span of 18 mm and the largest butterfly is has wind span of 194 mm so these are the topics related to the species which have been found in the last week so now moving to the last topic that is a forestation scheme which has been launched in telangana it is known as harita haram and it is in news because telangana chief minister chandrashekhar rao launched the sixth phase of harita haram which aims at planting 30 crore saplings in the state harita haram is a plantation schemes to increase the green cover of the state so it is one of the world's largest plantation drive and it is also known as yadadri model yadadri model was developed from the 
मेवाकी सिस्टम इट इज बाय डेवलप बाय द जापानीज बोटेनिस्ट अकीरा मेवाती दैट इंश्योर फास्टर प्लांट ग्रोथ एंड डेंसर प्लांटेशन सो यदाद्री मॉडल जो है वो मेवाकी सिस्टम को यूज करते हुए मेवाकी सिस्टम क्या होता है कि जब भी हम कोई एरिया की वहां पे अगर हम सैपलिंग्स लगा रहे हैं या वहां पे हम अगर कोई प्लांट को लगा रहे हैं तो वहां की सॉइल प्लस वहां के ग्राउंड वाटर प्लस वहां की जो भी कंडीशन है जोग्राफिकल उसके बेसिस पे हमें प्लांट्स को सर्च करना होगा एंड टू इम्प्रूव द सॉइल फर्टिलिटी वी विल यूज द साइंटिफिक मेथड्स सो द मॉडल इंक्लूड द साइंटिफिक ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ सॉइल एंड इम्प्रूविंग इट्स फर्टिलिटी बाई यूजिंग बाई यूजिंग वर्मी कम्पोस्टिंग plants will be selected based on the suitability of the soil condition and it will not be done on the monoculture basis ki ek hi species ko humne continuously uh, plantation kar diya different types of species will be planted at one area so that the soil and the other geographical conditions can be utilized maximum so iske benefits kya honge forest cover increase hoga ग्राउंड वाटर लेवल इम्प्रूव होगा क्योंकि हम इरिगेशन मेथड जो है वो साइंटिफिक मेथड से करेंगे जिससे वाटर का यूटिलाइजेशन बेटर फॉर्म में हो सके एंड द थर्ड इज इट विल इंक्रीज द सॉइल फर्टिलिटी टू बिकॉज हम ऑर्गेनिक मेथड से सॉइल को फर्टाइल करेंगे अपार्ट फ्रॉम यूजिंग द केमिकल पेस्टिसाइड्स एंड इंसेक्टिसाइड्स सो दिस इज द स्टेट मॉडल ऑफ increasing the forest cover there are other government schemes for the conservation of forest also first is compensatory afforestation compensatory afforestation ka matlab ye ki agar hum kahin pe koi bhi development ke liye whether for the road development ya housing ke liye hum wahan pe agar plants ko remove kar rahe hain ya forest area ko hum clean kar rahe hain to equivalent hi forest areas ko develop karne ka jo plan hoga उसको हम कंपेंसेटरी एफॉरेस्टेशन में द प्लान इज फॉर्मुलेटेड एंड सबमिटेड टू द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट द अदर इंपॉर्टेंट स्कीम इज नेशनल ग्रीन इंडिया मिशन सो द मिशन एम्स एट होलिस्टिकली डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट सो दैट इट कैन हेल्प इन क्लाइमेट मिटिगेशन फॉरेस्ट फूड सिक्योरिटी वाटर सिक्योरिटी बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन एज वेल एज लाइवहुड सिक्योरिटी सो द मेन एम ऑफ नेशनल ग्रीन इंडिया मिशन इज for the overall development of the forest so these were the environmental topics which have been in the news in the last one week for any query you can mail us at info@ishelpdesk.in and for more guidance and for more videos you can visit our website ishelpdesk.in you can also download the pdf of the material given in the description box thank you